Hello everyone, my name is Aminta and I am a program specialist at Cobb County Water Systems Water Efficiency Program. Today I'll be sharing with you a river rock painting activity using items you may already have at home. River rocks are a great way to learn about water's role in weathering and erosion. This video will guide you to blend science and art together. It's especially great for families with youth from kindergarten to second grade. So let's get started, shall we? Here's what you're going to need. A table cover, a plastic cup with some water in it, a rag that you don't mind getting dirty, an assortment of paintbrushes, whatever that you can find on hand, a plastic tray or a paper plate to mix paints, and an assortment of acrylic paints. Last but not least, you are going to need a river rock. Head on outside and put on your shoes. Kids, make sure you bring a parent or guardian and start looking for that stone that you want to paint on. Now that you've found your river rock, you'll want to clean it first. Fill a bowl of water and use a scrub with a little bit of dish soap to get into all those nooks and crannies. And when you're done, rub it down with a cloth rag and set it aside. While we're waiting for the rocks to dry, let's learn about how these rocks are formed. River rocks are given the name because they are often found in bodies of water, such as streams, lakes, and of course rivers. Can you think of other places that you can find a river rock? Take a moment to observe again how nice and smooth they are. That's because water has been flowing over and around these rocks and wearing away the surfaces over a very long period of time. This wearing away process is called weathering. Now that we've talked about weathering, let's explore a related term. Can you guess what it is? As a river like our very own Chattahoochee River flows downstream, it pushes and carries away rocks and sediment such as sand, silt, or gravel. The act of carrying away these rock particles is called erosion. As rivers slow down, these larger rock particles get deposited, meaning they settle on the bottom or on the banks, where water constantly flows over rocks and wears them down. A river rock is dry and now ready to paint. Let's start. I'll be showing you how to paint a water drop. First, you'll want to paint the whole surface of your rock one color. Today, I decided to choose white. Next, you'll want to paint your raindrop. Here's how to make an outline if you need help with shapes. Start by painting a circle, and if it looks more like an oval, that's fine too. Next, you want to draw a small dot slightly above your circle. And from there, paint one line so that it touches the leftmost edge of that circle. And then, you just repeat for the other side. And voila! You have your raindrop shape. All that is left is to fill it in. You can use other shades of blue to make your raindrop pop. You can also mix white with blue to make lighter shades of blue to use. You can also use other colors to decorate around your raindrop. The possibilities are endless. Now's the time to get creative. Now that you've finished painting your river rock, it is time to let it dry. You'll want to leave it where it is for at least a half an hour or more. And make sure you don't touch the painted surface, otherwise you might smear your hard work. I have one more tip before we go. If you want to keep these indoors after they are dry, they are perfectly fine the way they are. However, if you do plan to leave them outside, maybe for a neighbor to find, you might want to ask a parent or guardian to find a high gloss or a matte sealant and spray paint the surface to protect your design from the weather. That's all everyone. Stay safe and stay healthy. I hope you enjoyed this activity. Bye!